nobody's going to Clarkson, huh? For transfer in the fall. Man, twenty thousand bucks we just gotta throw away. Oh well, not my twenty thousand. <laughs> what? He's just handing it over. I agree to take one class there in the fall, can I have it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. No, you have to be accepted and you have to be half full time. So the gym classes? <laughs> full time. Oh Major in criminal justice for for all I care. Yeah, I don't know. Alright, no no questions, no concerns over the last problem we had. So besides what was this? Besides what was it? Well, you're ready for a new one then. <laughs> All right. Um, here's the setup. We have uh, um, block sliding along a well, I guess it's a smooth surface. We'll uh, we'll make it even easier on you for that. Um, but then there's a cable that goes over there too. A weight, and we have a spring. Connected to it there. All right. So that's the basic setup. Measuring X from there, that height being 18 inches. That was four pounds. This one's eight pounds. Spring constant, 72 pounds per foot. Rest length, 12 inches. And you need to find two things. Find the velocity of A when X equals four inches and find the maximum distance X that the system will go. So kind of a warm up, uh, but a step beyond what we were trying before with the work energy equation. The 18 inches is to the roll? Or is it? Oh, sorry. The uh, 18 inches is to the level of A, where the spring is attached. Can you find the velocity at A, and what was that from the X max. The maximum distance that will travel. At x equals zero, the system's at rest. Okay, so the system's released from there. That's been put the springs straight up and down. What's the speed after it's moved four inches? That's a question. So is it a Jake sizing question? No. No? no. It's a legitimate question. Huh? All right. Can I, like, are we supposed to take that tension from A to B and 
can we use that as like an outside, like a workforce? Can we substitute that into like work? Well, good question. For once, you yes, you can. You could take A as a system itself, and then the tension would be an outside applied force. However, is that the easiest way to do it? Let's let's put up the work energy equation. What's it look like? U being the the work term. Now, uh, we have actually here uh, a system of two things. The, there's at least two things doing, moving, and undergoing all kinds of things. So we can use the work energy equation for systems where there are more than one object undergoing any of the terms in here, which is real nice when you use this work energy equation. You just sum this stuff up. What was the next term? Uh, delta T. If you've got more than one thing, no sweat. You just sum them up. And so on for the other two terms. Oops. These are always delta change in potential energy terms is the, the concern over there. All right, so are any of those terms zero? Well, that comes back to Jake's question. Jake's proposal is that we take block A and make it into a system of its own. Right, so you'd have the tension there, you'd have the, the spring coming back there, and then you treat it like any other problem that we've done before. And then you'd have to finish it, uh, you'd have to, to work with it, and then you'd have the tension on B, uh, and it's weight which obviously need to be unbalanced because otherwise the system wouldn't accelerate, it would just stay at rest. So we, we'd uh, have to find uh, the connection between those two things. So that's one possibility. What about the possibility of The whole thing is a single system. Now what's the work term? Zero. Why zero? Because there's, there's no other forces. There are outside forces. There are kind of forces. You know, we've got we've got reactions here, we've got support there. However, it's not just that they're conservative, but actually they're not. Reaction forces aren't conservative. But what's more important to us, how much work do those forces do? None, because they're not those, those reaction forces, the force holding this and the force there uh, in the wall, whatever, they're not moving anywhere. So they don't, they don't go anywhere, they don't move anywhere, they don't do any work. So if we do that, that work term becomes zero. But then how do we handle the tension in that line? Well, the B, B is going to be the um, potential energy change. No, how do we handle the tension in the line? Yeah, B has some potential energy change. So that term's not zero. At least for B it's not. For A it is. But for B it's not. Yeah, how do we handle how do we handle this unknown tension in the cable connecting the two blocks? Maybe it's already handled in one of those terms. Maybe it's already handled in one of those terms. Well which one? 
Um, the tension. Well, this is this is which term is this? Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. So this only matters if a mass, any of the masses, is changing speed, which clearly A and B are. So we're just going to have to sum those two things together there. But the tension itself is not a mass that's moving, so there's no kinetic energy associated with the fact that the cable's moving. These remember we take these to be stretchless, massless cables. No, since it's massless, we don't care what the height of the cable is. Um, cable stretchless, so we couldn't put it in there. We don't care what the tension is in the cable. If we make this entire one entire system, it's an internal force. We don't care about internal forces. They're they're equal and opposite. There they cancel each other. We're not in the least bit concerned. So we need to do this for uh, the the kinetic energy term for both the gravitational energy only applies to B, and then there is a spring, so we do need to include that one in there to take into account that we have a spring that changes length. So, uh, what we have here actually is a system where there's no outside forces that do any work. What we have is a system, an uh, isolated system. And a system that undergoes conservation of energy. No energy is being introduced by the outside forces. All that can happen then is energy can transfer between these three groups. And that's indeed what we have, uh, a decrease in the kinetic, uh, the potential, gravitational potential energy is going to contribute to an increase in kinetic energy and an increase in the elastic energy uh, because we will be stretching the strength. What do we do, however, uh, any, any trouble with this one? that you foresee. One half mb squared for the two of them. Uh, change in one half mb squared. What about this one? Pretty straightforward. We, you know how far it's falling. Uh, at least for this first calculation, we know it's going four inches. What about this one? You've got the, the spring. Let's see, the system starts with A here, so the spring is straight up and down. Later, the spring moves to here, and in fact, as it's always moving, the spring is at a changing angle. Um, I'm confused at something when you said find uh, at x equals 4 inches. Oh, wait, no, I feel like I'm at yeah. now. Starts here, goes 4 inches. So you need to find the the speed at four inches after it's gone four inches. Ah. You okay then? Right. Do, we, do we have the height that B drops? Is it going to be that 18 inches? Well, if if for this first part, are, are these two the same problem? Uh, yes, probably. Well, if if what how do we know where X max is? That's where the system starts from rest, speeds up for a bit, and then finally the string gets stretched out enough and brings the system back to a start, a stop. So if these two are the same, then VA is zero. Because the velocity's got to be zero at X max. If it's not zero, then it's still going. So these are two separate problems. So for this one, if A moves four inches, B drops four inches. So that's a, a make that term a pretty straightforward 
calculation. What do you do about the spring that's pointing in one direction here in a completely different direction here? Remember that, that delta VE term, one half K times del 2 squared minus del 1 squared, where del is what? The length minus the original length. Where that del is the length at any instant. So del 1 would be L1, the length of the string uh, at point 1, which is 18 inches. So we can do that. Minus its rest length. So 18 inches is how long the spring is at point 1. Its rest length is 12. So del 1 is simply 6 inches. What about del 2? L2, well that's however long the spring is when the block is moved to four inches. What about the angle of the spring? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All we want to know is how much energy is in the spring. We don't care what angle the spring is. We just care the fact that it took some energy to stretch it. Doesn't matter what angle it was stretched at, just needed some energy to stretch it. So find those three terms, then, and uh, I'll leave you with x max, because then I have another problem I want you to work on instead. So do these three terms separately, remember, too. You've got some units you have to watch in this problem, and you've got some minus signs you've got to watch. Because if anything goes down, something else has to go up, because no energy enters or leaves this system. Only outside forces can bring or take energy out. Okay, Alex. Okay, Alex. What did you find out was the stretch length of that spring was 18 inches? Uh, because I I gave you that. That this dimension is 18 inches and the problem starts x equals 0, v equals 0. Starts from rest there. Uh -oh. Is released from rest. system. It's just really an accounting problem. You can divide it up into as small parts as you want. You just add them all together. As long as you've got the minus signs right, the units right, and when you add things together, you're adding the correct things to each other. You can't just mix and match things. But if you have more than one thing moving, figure them out separately, add them together. Actually, for the kinetic energy term, when you write that out, they're both moving the same velocity. You, well, no, they're different masses. But the, in this case, they both have the same velocity, so that will reduce to, uh, since the velocity at point one is zero. This will reduce to the velocity point two times the sum of the masses.
up, Jake. Come on. Right, Jake? Right. What? Which part? Right. Mass. Stupid the mass. Is this the mass or the weight I've given you here? I told you that anytime we see the pound, it's going to be uh, a force. So that equal whatever that equal. What does that equal? I don't think I have it separately written down anywhere. Right. One, two, four. Yeah. It's what? Point one, one, two, four. Point one, two, four. What about the units? Leave them that way. That's my suggestion. You can convert them to slugs or pound mass or whatever it is you want to, but if you just leave them like this, Then when you put it in uh, in the equations, the units will just come right back out and you'll be fine. In fact, on the gravitational energy term, where you have mg delta h, mg is the weight. So just put the, the uh, uh, eight pounds in there because that's block B is the only one going through a, a change in height. So you might want to check each of the three terms with somebody before you go any farther. No sense adding them together trying to solve the problem if you've got any one of those three terms wrong. And that means minus signs and units. Anybody have 
any of the three terms you want to check? Yeah. Check with somebody else first. No. So I'm not, might not be on speaking terms. Oh. Plus, don't forget all of these. You can tell whether they're getting, whether they're positive terms or negative terms. So always check that too. Don't forget to square stuff. I'm actually still stuck on the del one and del two. I'm still stuck on that first term. How to get this? Yeah, I'm not sure what L one. This is the length of the spring at any time in the problem. This is the rest length of the spring. How long it was when you bought it from the store and took it out of the box, which I gave twelve inches. So at L at point one, where the box is up here to start with. The spring is 18 inches long. That's L1. So L1 is 18 inches minus the rest length of 12 inches gives you a stretch. That's what this is, the stretch in the spring. The, the over stretch, if you will, is 6 inches. Okay, so where did L2 come from? That's point two. Point two is when it's moved four inches. So Pythagorean theorem. We've got four inches by 18 inches. You can figure out how long the spring is. And then that's L2. And you subtract from an L0. I guess three. What's this? And Watch your units, because the spring strength is in per foot, pounds per foot. Do you guys agree? Pretty much. Pretty much. What do you have? You want to? And remember, in this work energy term, the energy quantities are all changes in energy. Don't leave the delta out, or you've got a different equation. What is? Nope. What is a what you um, spring? Oh, you tell me. What? Delta V E? Yeah. Nope. Well ten what? Inches or feet? Doesn't matter. You want me to what? What? Is just just the what? We've got three terms. So if you give me any one of those three terms, I can check it. Right. The Which one? The kinetic term. Is it just would you just put in 0.37 v2 squared? What's 0.37? The mass of one half times the masses mm -hmm. divided by g. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't have 0.37. Okay. But it's easy to check. 0.5, that's the one half, times 12, that's the two masses together, divided by 32.2. 0 0.186. Times v2 squared since v1 is zero. That's what I have. Here. DJ, how you doing?
really hard to check the entire problem, but if I can check any one of the three pieces independently, because it's unlikely you got all three of them wrong, so we can find out just which one of it is wrong if you only have a small problem to correct. Two things, and they're directly connected, so they always have the same speed. Since they always have the same speed, uh, not, not and V1 is that. zero, then you just add the two. You can just add the two masses together. Even for a mod, what I was saying was the change in the tensile energy term, the mg delta h. Oh, here. Yeah. Well, how much height does a change? None. None. It's only the height change in B. So this would be 8 pounds, yeah. only B. I was confused because since they're still directly connected. Yeah, but for the potential energy term, gravitational potential energy term, A has no change. What do you got? BG negative what? Yeah. The, uh, well, nope. About 2.51 uh, feet per second? Yeah. I had 2.6, 6.4, so that might be a little bit of round off. Yeah, yeah. Delta V what? Delta V E. What do you have? Foot pounds?
That's right. Jake, good job. 1.36, yeah, I got there. 1.36 was okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're multiplying fine. Look at the physics. No, 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 no. It's not the height is four. It's the change in height. It starts. How are we taking that as negative four? Well, we we have to. It doesn't matter what is positive or negative direction. This is a loss in height in a gravitational field. That's got to be then a negative term. Even if you choose down as positive, then that makes G uh, you know, it, it, it's a uh, Delta VG equals VG2 minus VG1, and there's no way that can come out with anything but negative, no matter whether you choose up as positive or down as positive. That's going to be a negative term. It doesn't matter whether you have 
up or down as negative, it's always going to finish lower than it started. Anytime you have a decrease in height in the gravitational field, you lost potential energy. There's no other way to look at it. height will also be x max as an unknown. So you'll have a quadratic in x max. Negative means it moves back to here. 
which it could, I guess. It could go to there, come to a stop, and the string pulls it back. So you want a positive root there? No, actually it wouldn't. It would stop there because we all have we have conservation of energy. Zero point six. Yeah. I had point six two. You had point six five. Yeah. Uh, could could be wait, round off my guess. Yeah. Uh, point six two. Point six two. Yeah. Uh, point six two. Yeah. Uh, point well, delta VG is easy. That's just minus 8 and x. Yeah. And then delta VE, I don't actually have separated the whole thing. Yeah, I'm going to have to have 72 times. Yeah. One point five x squared minus one point five. One point five x squared. I don't know how that worked out. It might be that. Square root of 1.5 squared plus x squared for you. Is that delta 2? I have to get around the square root of 1.5. Oh, you've got to square the delta. Square root of 1.5. Yeah, there's a minus 1 there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, probably can't solve it directly as a quadratic. You have to either graph it or. Uh, Guess and uh, plug in whatever you call it. Hit, hit and miss, try to find it, or. <coughs> anyway, we can leave that part for, for, for later. Yeah, where are you? Okay, yeah. That one I uh, don't think that's a straight quadratic. Because you will have the um, del 2, which will be, um, will have a, the x max in it, but it will also have the, another term, so it won't uh, square root claim it. Yeah, but you're gonna have you're gonna have this term. This term has a one half with the x max under it with another term that won't square root plainly. And then you have this one term, and then that's what gets squared. So leave that one for for checking you, uh, at home when you have a little more time to solve it if you want. But I got 0.62 feet. On that one, so you can check it. There's a number of different ways, but uh, I don't think we have to solve it directly. Oh. <laughs> Even though there's less left over, it does complicate itself. You okay, Jay? Yes. Ready for a harder one? Not a harder one. This one, it, 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 these there's no tricks in solving this one. But again, I recommend you do each of the three terms or each of the four terms if they exist separately. different pieces moving, we'll have to sum the, all the terms. And this can be your 
get out of the question, class question. Start the weekend early. Awesome is that? Yeah. What about making a whole system around it that puts the motor on the inside? Does that work this time? system by uh, either the uh, electrical connection on the motor or the fact that it, you've got fuel it's consuming you. It's that kind of energy. So you can't so, so you can't you can't take the motor oh, out of this work term. It can only be as a work term. But that's fine because you've got the force it exerts. And you know how long it exerts that force, so the work term becomes pretty straightforward for the motor. So, okay. where do we put the friction? Friction on the work term? Yep. You, on, on this problem you just got, you have two work terms now. This friction. The motor is doing positive work, and the friction is doing negative work. Is there there's friction in this one? Yeah. Yeah, there's friction here. That, that, that thing runs in the chute. I put that, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'll look for a new Yeah. Well, see, if I gave you that, then we're going to know what the normal force is and what's the normal force when something's squeezed into a chute like that. So I thought I'd just give you the, the, the force, friction force directly. Still, a sum of each of those individual parts it can still be done that same way. It's just different things are zero this time. What, Bob? You said you had a question. Oh. Still have the deal with the 
same three terms. Are any of them zero? No, in this case, none of them are zero. Because we have work. By the molar N by friction. Friction is never anything but work term because it's a non-conservative force. So, um, like when I'm doing the work, I'm summing it to be um, like the motor times force to the motor times distance minus that one because it's, it's dropping. No. Or no, no, that's adding to it. For the work term, friction is always negative work. It doesn't matter if something's going up, down, or sideways. Friction is always negative work because it always opposes the direction of motion. Remember that the work comes from the dot product. In the kinetic energy term, you've got both A and B are moving or are having changes in speed, but only B has any change in height. And delta B E is the spring. Engineering design. 
calculate motion with pulleys and the problems? What? We covered those, didn't we? Can you just give me a head nod or something? <laughs> As soon as you stop just guessing, I'm done. It's my, I don't get one guess. What was your guess? Is v one of uh, v half of? Uh, All right. Wait. <laughs> I didn't hear the whole thing, and I started nodding. You just said you wanted a head nod, so you got it. But I don't know what it was nodding to. It's like signing a paper I hadn't read. I can't be held responsible. Where you start this day? Just Saturday or Friday right before lunch. Loss of momentum. Pretty much. Only one more week before spring break. That's pretty cool. Southwest Airlines. Down to that. Fort Lauderdale. Hey, we post next Friday's videos before you leave. <laughs> yeah, right. We bet that's going to happen. Well, let's see. I think I'm going to sit there. <laughs> or can you just cancel Friday's classes and leave early and just post like slideshow things like you last night? Should we just take that through the end of the term? <laughs> Might as well. The trouble is, those took me about, about uh, three hours more than just me driving in, doing the class, and driving home when it done. So I only live one mile away, so that's not that good, but I can do the route to the faculty parking lot. Oh, right, right. Yeah. I don't know what Friday's secret route is going to be. I don't get that until that morning. It, just, it automatically shows up in our uh, our GPS, you know, the school tables.
see that. Well, what'd you get for the work done by the motor? All right, what'd you get for work done by friction? All that length. No? All the that well, let's don't forget it's minus. Uh, for the mass of B. One half times the mass of B. 
times zero what? Nine, zero minus one point two squared. Zero minus no. Because B isn't moving. I mean B is moving. Oh, he is moving 1.2 squared. So there's actually a factor of 4 on that one because it needs to be 1 half squared. So the minutes. <laughs> 17.1. Let's check. Where are we? Minus 12. Minus 10.1. Minus 1.96 Minus 1.96 MB, okay. Plus 35. Okay, you're you're missing a term. Delta T, where's delta T? What's that? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 what you put in for M? 14 kilograms. Okay, yeah. But uh, oh, he also shoot. has kinetic energy change. Man of me if you don't leave stuff out. Beautiful. That's why you remain my second favorite student. That's great. How do you do the work of time? You still got seven minutes. Relax. We're going anyway with work. DJ, Colin, you guys are all quiet. The force of the war. What? Am I checking in? I got seven. For the final mass, could be, I had 17.1, could be round off, you know, the, the spring stretch terms have different uh, degrees of precision depending on what you did with them. So what? Good job, Vinny. Yeah. However, you go look at a garage door whenever that's what they've got on them. So what you get the word This is twenty four minus thirty six. So does would this be the light turn? Uh, huh? So 10 yeah. 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 Check each little piece. So you did the whole thing together? Yeah. You didn't miss anything. You didn't miss a minus sign, you missed a square, you didn't miss a term. And you like doing it that way. Okay, well, you know what you're challenging me to do is come up with a problem even harder than this. This is the problem I had all four terms, had multiple parts to some of the terms, and now, now Colin is challenging me. That's assuming that the difference between yours and mine is round off, but we can't check. Because I can't check your individual terms, which is the easiest way to, to to uh, debug this problem. 17.2. No, 17.1.